Hello and welcome to Nigeria, the road to 2019, a series of programs where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I'm Charles Anyaguru. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, all the news, comment and analysis that provide unrivaled insight into Nigeria 2019, including after that combative and some say decidedly undemocratic note struck by President Buhari at the Nigerian Bar Association conference on the rule of law versus the national interest, Mr. Buhari's aides react to the sharp criticism that has trailed the president's declaration. We speak to one of his senior spokesmen and assess the import and impact of that statement, as well as its significance as Nigeria moves closer to the 2019 ballot. Political tensions appear to be rising again in Nigeria, where President Buhari has been under the waves from a host of challenges, not least the gale of defections from his APC party, and just recently the torrent of sharp criticism that's followed his controversial statement delivered at the opening ceremony of the Nigerian Bar Association Conference that the rule of law must be subject to the supremacy of Nigeria's security and national interest and not the other way around. Bullish as ever, the president and his deputies are showing no signs of going back on that assertion, even though Nigeria's best legal minds and defenders of the constitution have loudly proclaimed Mr. Buhari's remarks shocking and unacceptable, with the opposition seizing the moment and warning that Mr. Buhari is giving advance notice that he intends to abuse the power of his office. Expectedly, though, Mr. Buhari's supporters have dismissed that allegation. Quite the contrary, say his aides, the president's remarks were not intended to ignore or circumvent the rule of law, but are consistent with constitutional values. So, who's got the right of it? Well, we've heard from the president's critics, so in the interest of balance and fairness, let's hear now from his supporters. Joining me in the studio is Mr. Buhari's senior spokesman, Garba Shehu. Good to see you, Garba. Busy day for you, no doubt, with all the international trips, so we appreciate your making time to come into the studio. Is there ever a situation where the rule of law can be inferior to national security and the collective interest, bearing in mind that the rule of law is really the constitution? I think that uh, if this is the interpretation that is being given to the president's statement, I think that uh, that is moving it out of focus. What did the president say? The president said he was talking about national interest overriding individual interest. He didn't say rule of law is well, subservient. He talked about the rule of law. Whatever it is, what my point is that, and let me take a little trip back to my you know, political science 101. Sure. I don't know whether it is John Locke or Rasum who talked about general good or public good against individual good. Mm. And the fact that that the interest of the majority, that's a philosophically speaking, has an overriding power mm. over that of the individual. Now, in the practice of law in our own country, even the Nigerian Supreme Court had reaffirmed this philosophy when it adjudicated on the matter of Asari Dokubo wanting to get bail in a given situation. And the Supreme Court of Nigeria said, look, the overall interest of the nation overrides your right to go on bail as a free man. Because if we set you free, there is no indication that you are not going back to the alleged acts of terror or sabotage of the national economy for which the state had arrested you. Well, I, I don't think the issue is really about whether the commission of a crime should be weighed against or, or matched against somebody's rights to, to be free or to be held incarcerated. I, I think the issue here 
is that body of rules and regulations that we call the Constitution and collectively is mm. called the rule of law mm. because the president specifically mentioned the rule of law and the fact that there are certain inalienable rights that are conferred on the individual <laughs> matched against the national interest that is intrinsic to that constitution and that includes for example judicial decisions that's why there's a separation of powers the executive is simply one arm of a tripartite alliance in government that includes the legislature and the judiciary and all three arms are equal and all three arms have their responsibilities both to the state and to the individual so when the president comes out and talks about the sublimation of the rule of law beneath national interest and the collective sort of interest or the collective good, as you put it. It mm. raises hackles because people get worried. Yeah, well, uh, well, the thing, as I said, is that you have a problem where, where people try to expand the space to spin off from where a statement is made. And this is, I think, the trouble we get into these days now. Uh, with the with, with growing influence of the social media and all of that. So the one that is not in trouble is the one who has said nothing. Mm. But the moment you are out there, then they take it and then they, they, they draw it out and they spin it and they yarn it. And then by the time you see it in black and white, you, sure know, you surely know that these are not your words. Mm. The president's words were not saying that it, rule of law wasn't important to any society. The president was saying that when there is a contention between individual rights and that of the entire society of the country, the right of the entire population, meaning the general good, as philosophy had defined it, so, so should, have, should, it should override that of individual. And let me say this. Right. Because the analysis had gone and had found a basis. I don't mean to bring in the Dasuki matter mm. before you. Yeah. But it has all led to that. Yes, and, and you have a point there because I was going to bring that up. But, but I tell you what, I don't mean to interrupt you. Yes, sir. I think we, we have the actual clip of President Buhari speaking at that Nigerian Bar Association conference. Let's just take a listen. Please. That lawyers can contribute to another core objective of enhancing our business environment and promoting social justice by promoting respect for the rule of law, contributing to the law reform process and putting national interest and professional ethics above self in the conduct of their business. Rule of law must be subject to the supremacy of the nation's security and the national interest. Our apex court has had calls to adopt a position on this issue in this regard, and it is now a matter of judicial recognition that where national security and public interest are threatened, or there is a likelihood of their being threatened, the individual rights of those allegedly responsible must take second place in favor of the greater good of society. And that's President Buhari speaking at the Nigerian Bar Association mm. conference. So very clearly, he mm. talked about the rule of law. Yeah. And the question is, uh, Mr. Shehu, was the president misadvised by his attorney no, general? Not, because no. apart from being a diplomatic disaster in that he chose to make <laughs> that statement before a legal assembly, the very people whose entire raison d'etre is defending the law and therefore the constitution. I mean, it's a rather worrying Orwellian thing for the president to say when the country is not at war and is preparing to showcase itself as a great bastion of democracy as elections approach. Well, let me say this, that uh, no one could have been embarrassed if they had uh, no maybe politics at the back of their own minds. Even those that you cited as having come from distant places to come and listen to and to witness this democracy. Back home in their own countries, it is, this is a governing principle that public good overrides individual good. And this is the very essence of what the president 
had pointed out that that in in, in the case of that Guantanamo detainee that 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 you know that rights are circumscribed are short circuited against and compared to that right which is available to a full U.S. citizen. Yeah, but the Guantanamo Bay issue is totally different. That's no, why... No, we're talking about, in, in this case, now the constant reference that they keep making, and right. I, I want to go back to this issue of the week, which I began to mention. Well, just it's to because, clarify the Guantanamo because, Bay issue, Guantanamo Bay, the whole point of Guantanamo Bay was that it was away from American soil, but and therefore not directly under the jurisdiction of United, the United States Constitution. That was one of the reasons why they moved it out there. Mm. Um, the United States had a responsibility for all of the things that happened in Guantanamo. You cannot pretend that, no, people, it's a dubious explanation to seek to say that no, no, I, the I'm U.S. I'm not saying that they are completely exonerated. Also, therefore, I, let's take it that it's American responsibility. That, that an issue it's, of landed rights. It, it's, American, it's American prison run by Americans against their laws of their own country. And they have their reasons for this. Well, and well, in our own case, as I said, right. you had one man who had a frequented the courts, gotten the best lawyers that we have got in the country, and obtained decisions right. that said, go, let him go. What the government is saying, and our Attorney General has said this over and over again, yeah, so he has rights, but then his action and inaction led to the death of over 100,000 citizens of this country.